It's time for Over There with Morella Rostrofer. Morella is our European correspondent. She joins us weekly. It is possible she is still over here. We will find out in a moment. Hi, Morella. How are you? Hi, Jill. Yes, very well. Thank you. And uh, yes, uh, a couple of weeks longer over here, but of course with a uh, real um, European um, subject uh, this morning uh, about President Emmanuel Macron. Um, We spoke so many times, Jill, about the Yellow Vest movement and uh, the reason for that movement and uh, the, the the consequences uh, to be seen already because of the movement. Uh, so I think it's absolutely essential in that perspective to speak about um, the conclusion uh, conclusions uh, of President Macron following what he called the great national debate. Um, As a little reminder, uh, after uh, the Yellow Vest um, uh, really uh, took uh, a huge influence on uh, on French uh, life uh, for months, uh, in that they uh, had protest every single Saturday, uh, in uh, m- most uh, important cities in France, uh, President Macron decided to organize different debates in all of the country uh, to listen to uh, people to know exactly what are the main concerns of the population in order to be able to also give an answer to those concerns. So after after having done that, he was supposed to uh, speak actually on the day of the fire at uh, Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. So the speech was obviously postponed, uh, but eventually uh, he uh, came back to it um, and um, said that he regarded uh, some demands of the Yellow Vest as fair demands. So this great national debate was not some kind of um, um, excuse to basically speak about things and never do something in a concrete manner, Uh, but he really wanted to show that he was going to take Uh, decisions and that this was going to be implemented in the French uh, politic. Um, All began, as we know, with a protest against the fuel price rises. Uh, This uh, this, uh, rise um, of the, the fuel price was actually not meant to be a bad thing as Um, Originally, it was meant to um, sustain uh, um, some some, um, uh, action against climate changes, but it was just uh, um, the the wrong way um, to to approach the problem as that was hitting people that uh, were already struggling in France. So that was basically the beginning of everything. Then afterwards, of course, uh, things developed and demands were uh, broader and on a larger scale. His answer to these uh, demands um, are the following. Um, He does want to make referendums easier It's not going to be as easy as it is, for example, in a country like uh, Switzerland. France has a complete different political system and it cannot be done the same way. But it definitely wants to help that being a possibility for, for example, for topics um, that are extremely important uh, for the population. 
and uh, now the hurdles and the, the, um, the, the, the problems linked to a referend referendums are so huge that nobody really tries and this is what he wants to change. Then he talked about the abolition of the ENA, uh, which is still an eventually an abolition because this is this is not a real promise. Uh, the ENA is a school that was formed in 1945 by uh, former uh, leader Charles de Gaulle. Um, but it was supposed to also recruit students from poorer backgrounds, which is uh, not really the case today. And why is that important? It's important for the French people because most leaders, most political um, leaders are actually coming from that school and it is considered an elitist uh, school uh, and therefore uh, not forming uh, people that uh, really understand um, the, the, the protest of the Yellow Vest, for example. Um, so by abolishing such a school, that would be a very symbolic way of showing that the leaders of the future are not necessarily going to come from the ENA, from an uh, elite school, uh, from people that eventually are not um, completely in touch with the needs of the French people. Um, he also promised to decentralize government, which is very important in France because most important uh, decisions are, taked, are taken sorry, in, in Paris, and that also creates some kind of a gap with the rest of France because there is obviously this feeling that um, what uh, happens in Paris is not uh, necessarily reflective on what happens in, um, in, in other places of the countries of the country where, sorry, where the, um, where all realities are quite different and uh, um, obviously the needs then are also quite different. A very important promise is a cut in income tax worth five billion. Um, of course, the first question was to know uh, where um, the money would be taken from in order to finance uh, such a cut. And uh, President Macron talked about um, closing companies' uh, tax uh, loopholes, uh, for example, uh, or making some uh, cuts in uh, other uh, budgets. Uh, but this is a definitely a big amount that comes actually on top of the 10 billions that were already spent uh, last December to answer the beginning of the Yellow Vest protesters. Um, th so that would be the financial part, um, including also an increase of the pensions, uh, of uh, pensions that are less than 2,000 euros uh, per month. Um, which also means, though, that French people will have to work more doing uh, working life in order to be able to um, uh, maintain the pension uh, contributions, because obviously that has also to come from somewhere. And President Macron said that French people would have to work harder. Um, he also wants to create a committee of uh, citizens to think of how to solve climate changes. Um, as we know, this is a problem that is uh, not, um, not going away uh, by itself. And if anything, the uh, issues of flooding in Canada 
this uh, past uh, days show uh, again that changes are taking place uh, faster than uh, uh, anticipated. So the question uh, now would be how did the Yellow Vest uh, protesters uh, react to this um, announcement? And that was very clear. This is just not enough. Uh, telling them that they will have to work harder in order to fund uh, the pensions, for example, is not an answer to their demand because what they want is um, uh, rich people, wealthy people in France uh, to be uh, more taxed in, in order to answer to uh, this kind of issues. And for them, the solution is not necessarily uh, uh, for them to work harder to finance um, those, uh, those solutions. Uh, so the bottom line is that last weekend um, the protest um, continued. It looked like um, it, it was a little bit less, less people. Um, they tried to uh, also get to the European Parliament in Strasbourg, uh, for example, and they uh, definitely uh, thought that if there is so much money from big companies, from very wealthy people in France to donate for the reconstruction of Notre Dame Cathedral, then there must be enough money uh, to uh, help them uh, have a better life as well. Um, that might seem a very simplistic way of uh, looking at issues, but it was definitely a, um, an argument uh, um, last week. And while mostly they were happy, of course, about uh, the, the, the reconstruction um, plans of the cathedral, uh, the, it, it, did, it did spark a few debates on um, the reasons why it would be possible uh, to undertake such a, a huge project and it is still not possible to help them in a more efficient way. That was for France. Thank you very much, Marella Rostrofer. Over there. My pleasure.